<laughs> Wait, Worship Dawn is getting abducted again? Well, this should be interesting. I gotta watch this when it comes out. Ah, oh, damn it! In December? But why? It isn't Christmas related or anything. Ugh, whatever. Might as well not make a big deal out of it. Well. Well, certainly not as good as I thought it'd be. Hello, Earth Pony. Romance Rider 1 here. Well, here I am with another review, and it's a negative review on the Worship Down. Hey, 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 calm it down! I meant Worship Down the miniseries that came out in December 22nd, 2018. <laughs> Like seriously, another series or adaptation on Warship Done? It already got a TV series where it was mostly given elements from the film and the novel, but also focusing on characters. And it has no blood, unlike the film that shown some. I don't remember much of the series as I never got to finish it on a DVD and I've now lost. I just know it was praised by younger audiences, but fans of the film and novel were mixed because of the changes made, such as turning Blackberry into a doe instead of keeping a male like the film. It was also criticized for being child friendly instead of dark like the film, which was why the third season took a darker tone and got magic themes. We even got to see the Black Rabbit of Enlay in the third season. That character is a rabid version of the Grim Reaper, especially in the film. Then we had a character called Silverweed developing psychic powers so similar to Fiverr's, and a character named Hannah learning of hedge magic, whatever that is. It is a series I do recommend as I thought it was decent, but it won't live up to much how much I liked the film. Anyway, that's not the series I'm reviewing, as it wasn't a miniseries since it went on for three seasons. This is the miniseries that was animated with computer animation, and it is like the film, I guess? I know I didn't watch the full beginning of the first episode, as when I got to my TV, it was the scene where they discuss how they'll save Clover and the other does from the farm. They do try to save them, and they manage to get the hutch open. Speaking of the farm, this is definitely different from the film. In the film, Clover and her friends only manage to escape briefly and get recaptured, never to be seen again. In the miniseries, all except Clover, I believe, actually escape, and there's a scene where they avoid obstacles in order to escape to where it should done, such as the cat and the dog, and we get that scene where a hunter chases them and Hazel is shot in the leg in the process, presumed dead. And I believe in the same scene, there's a part where they need to climb and run fast enough to avoid getting hit by a train. I get this series has themes of the novel and film, but I've never read the book, so it was a little distracting for me. Heck, when we get the scene where we see the villain General Wildwort, it is also so very different from the film. You see, there are lots of scenes I never saw in the film, and that was very confusing. While I like they got the elements to the novel, that's not why I don't like this miniseries too much. The first thing I want to talk about is the main character's design and the voices of the main characters. They are not that good, and I'll explain why. The designs, while well look nice, are all way too similar, except for Fiverr, as we all know he is the smaller rabbit with that sort of young voice, and Bigwig, as we know he's that tough rabbit with that sort of deep voice. We also have Strawberry from the TV series, who never appeared in the film, and is now a doe in this miniseries instead of a buck. She's also a character with a different design, and from what I can see, the only one with a sort of red colour to her fur. But for Hazel... Well, while I like James McAvoy, I can only tell his voice a few times, but most of the time, and because of the character designs, there were times I couldn't tell which was him or any of the other rabbits that were on the journey to Watership Down. And because Clover and her friends look similar in the miniseries, I couldn't tell it was her who gets recaptured in that farm escaping scene, but because she had the most lines out of all the does in the farm, it's likely she indeed got captured, never to be seen again, like in the film, except it's only her and not she and the other does. Now onto the other voices. This one I don't like the most and it distracted me a lot. It was the voice of Kihar. Remember him? The short tempered bird we see in the film but was also very funny. Heck, he even to piss off the Hazel in the film. The only character to swear in it too. How they got away with that, I'll never know. But then again, it was the 70s. You could get away with a lot of kid stuff back then. Disney did it with dark scenes and innuendos, I think. Wish they could go back to that since modern Disney, not Disney Pixar, as I only count that as Pixar, 
It's pretty boring. Like, be cool with the kids. Well, I'll accept the live action remix. They're decent. Anyway, Kihar is voiced by the 12th Doctor from Doctor Who. Ugh. <sighs> Alright, excuse me a minute while I go confront those crazy fans. Alright, that should be over. I swear, if they show up again, I'll do it once more. Hmm, the police might come after me, even after the times I hit two race ponies I don't like, and two I like, because they were arguing so much. Back to Keyhor's voice. The reason the voice is so distracting is because instead of sounding Eastern European, like in the film, he sounds more Scottish. And that is very distracting, and the worst voice, as it's not accurate to the film, and I think the novel as well. He sounds more Scottish for goodness sake. The voice of the rabbits are all fine, because they sounded British anyway, but Keyhars is the most inaccurate. Why didn't they get an actor that has an accent to their voice? Like an actor from Germany, Ukraine, or any country that counts as being as Eastern European. My geography isn't great, so I'm very sure Germany isn't around there. The original actor for Kihar was an American actor who was of Eastern European Jewish origin, and he did amazing in the voice. So they should have gotten a voice actor like him for Keyheart instead of having one where they make him sound Scottish. And finally, the voice of Wildwort, played by Ben Kinsley. He's the best voice we have. I love that deep, sinister voice he has when he talks. But like the good guy's voices, some of Wildwort's warriors all sound similar to him and look a little similar as well. That was a little distracting. Time to wrap this review up. It's time to talk about the positives of this miniseries. The one that really stands out is the animation. It is really gorgeous, and I love the shading and the lighting in the different times of day. The nighttime is my favourite, and I love when something intense happens, the angles really suit. One small complaint I have is the lack of blood in this miniseries. I get they want to avoid parents complaining about blood in a kid's phone, but like I said in my Ellen Whitsker The Horse Mystery review, you know that parents always say don't have blood in kids stuff, but I disagree, as how are kids to learn on if they get hit by something sharp or what, they have blood seeping out. The only scene I remember having blood was the scene where Hazel gets shot with a gun and is presumed dead. I don't think at the part where he's injured and has to go to warship down like it that I see any blood. Then again, it could be my eyesight or it was lighting because most of it was in the night time. But hang on, Big Quick gets scratched in the face by the farm cat named Tabata. It draws no blood, yet when Hazel is shot, we see blood on the ground a little because of the flashlight. Um, you do realize that when kids get scratched in the face by a cat or sharp nails, it draws blood a little, depending how deep and big the scratch is, it draws blood. Ugh, screw it, not worth my time to rant about. And finally, what I like is the music, preferably the ending theme song. I didn't really pay attention to the music in the scenes. The ending song is what gets me tearing up. I rather watched the music video that featured Warship Dawn miniseries clips including scenes that we haven't seen yet, so I got a spoiler since the music video was released two days before the first episode was out, but the scenes are so beautiful. And like a lot of people say, Sam Smith is a great singer, both live shows and in recording. I may not listen to him as this is the only song I've heard from him and it's really beautiful. All I know is the music video focuses on Hazel and Clover's relationship, like when the lyric, Then I saw you, and I knew. Is said, the clips used are very well timed, even if Warship Down is not a romantic thing. More of a horror and drama, but with a little romantic themes to it. So the song is more of a romantic wrong about being strong together, instead of a song about working together to defeat a villain and such. And yeah, that's all I need to say. The voice acting was meh, the voices are used also, and the character designs too, but the animation and music were really nice. I don't really recommend this series all that well, but if the series got better in the next free episode, I'm sorry I won't be watching them. It's just the first episode put me off like if the first season of a series was really bad. So that's all for now guys, and I'll- And I'll see you all next time, and now I gotta run!